वेलकम आई एम शिल्पा रत्नम एंड दिस इज अ स्पेशल प्रिव्यू टू नेक्स्ट टेन इंश्योटेक समिट 2023 इंडियाज इंश्योरेंस सेक्टर इज स्क्रिप्टिंग अ डिजिटल फर्स्ट ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव अप्रोच इवन एज इट इज कांस्टेंटली इवॉल्विंग एंड इन सिंक विद वेरियस टेक डेवलपमेंट्स द इंश्योरेंस इंडस्ट्री इन कॉम्पेंसेटिंग बोथ लाइफ एंड जनरल इंक्लूडिंग हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू बिकम द सिक्स्थ बिगेस्ट मार्केट फॉर इंश्योरेंस इन द वर्ल्ड बाय 2032 Now Zopper is a company that fuses insurance and technology seamlessly to provide one of a kind end to end solutions to its partners. It is one of the first companies that was bullish on tech and insurance an early insurtech player and its strong channel of partnerships sets it apart. Now I'm very pleased to introduce the founder of Zopper Surjendra Koila for this forecasting discussion on the future of insurtech. Hello and welcome sir. Thanks for having me Shilpa. Thanks for being here and we would love to know what actually drew Zopper to this insurance sector and what were the problems that you wanted to solve initially and what was your vision for Zopper. Sure if you look at the macroeconomic factors the insurance uh, penetration of the country which is around 4.2% uh, 1% would be your non life and 3.2% would be your life insurance mm -hmm. on the insurance penetration. If you look at the insurance density, if you look at the uh, uh, mortality protection gap, all of these indicate a very significant trend mm -hmm. that uh, there is a lot of work that needs to be done in the insurance sector. Uh, not only from a protection standpoint, but what we have also seen that uh, insurance sector has always been a sunrise industry. Mm -hmm. And we believe for the next 20, 25 years it would be, right. So from a capitalist mindset, if you look at it, it's a, it's a large total addressable market. When you look at BFSI as an industry, uh, we believe there is a lot of uh, innovation that has happened in uh, lending and payments. Mm -hmm. Insurance as a sector hasn't seen those many innovations, right. And somebody who have always believed that technology is going to disrupt uh, any sector that we play in. Uh, insurance took sort of the pole position there and we felt that you know let us dabble and, and figure out what can be done in that particular sector so to say. And dabbled very successfully clearly. Thank you. <laughs> now how do you think Zopa has contributed to the innovation and the entire transformation of this sector right like what unique technologies or strategies did you want to bring to bring about this disruption? Sure, sure. So if you look at, uh, you know, insurance is not a very old industry in mm -hmm. India. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not talking about, you know, pre-independence or, or mm -hmm. not, not talking about pre-globalization. It's a 21, 22 year old industry uh, where a lot of globalization started happening, FDI started coming in. Our business model is very different from the incumbent business models of both the insurance companies and insurtechs who came prior to us, mm -hmm. right. We are not a B2C company, mm -hmm. we are a B2B2C company and hence by virtue of the fact that we sit between insurance companies and ecosystem partners, right. What we do is we enable insurance companies APIs and integrate with these large small mid size ecosystem partners and offer them a solution which helps in insurance distribution seamlessly end to end right starting from let us say you know uh, the propensity model to uh, you know maybe an IRDA reporting right. So our belief is that nobody in India came before us uh, who thought that this can be a very significant and can be a very prominent model uh, as far as insurance is concerned. As far as technology is concerned if you look at it when I integrate with large and small ecosystem partners. I am talking about integrating with large banks, large uh, NBFCs and here we are talking about very deep integration because we are talking about core banking system integration, we are talking about loan origination system integration and these are integrations which take a long, long time, mm -hmm. sometimes as long as a year, mm -hmm. right. And our belief is that once you go deeper and deeper into ecosystem, your stickiness with those clients increase, right. And hence also from a business standpoint, it's a, it's a moat that we have created. But when you look at from the standpoint of the partners, uh, they have gotten a digital solution, right, uh, which enables insurance distribution in a frictionless manner. And when you look at uh, from the lens of uh, insurance carrier or insurance manufacturer, uh, they 
we bring them a lot of distribution partners in a very digital uh, format. You know, a lot of people watching this would not know where exactly they would have encountered Zopper in their day-to-day -day life. But as it turns out, there are many such instances. Would you like to tell us sure. where we would have met your company? Okay. So, uh, you know, it's a very interesting question because uh, as I say that we are not a B2C company. But if you look at, look around, mm -hmm. uh, you will see that there are multiple avenues and multiple channels uh, where you would find us, mm -hmm. right? So let's say if you buy uh, a mobile phone from your neighborhood store mm -hmm. or maybe a large format retail store like Chroma or, or any, uh, any other large retail chains, invariably you will find us there, right? Let's say if you go to one of uh, your spectacle stores, uh, if you go to let's say Titan, mm -hmm. right, uh, you will find us there. If you are taking a loan from a large NBFC, mm -hmm. uh, it is very probable that you will find us there. Uh, if you are below poverty line or maybe a little above that mm -hmm. and you are taking let us say a 30,000 rupees loan from a microfinance institution, uh, very probable that you know you will see us there. And on the other extreme, let us say if you are buying let us say a, a, a travel uh, ticket from uh, you know one of the largest uh, OTAs, uh, you will find us there. And segments where there is a lot of trust like banks. Uh, you will definitely find us find us there because we work with more than 11, 12 banks. So across the spectrum, mm -hmm. right? Our belief is that the concept of embedded insurance or invisible insurance, uh, as we as we call it in our parlance, uh, does not require any specific uh, domain. Mm -hmm. But it can fit into anything and everything around around us. So you really are a household fixture and now people know how as well. Now let's talk about the next 10 InsurTech Summit 2023. What is its significance for India's insurance ecosystem and what trends do you see in the market and how do you personally adapt your strategies to stay ahead? If you have seen over the last uh, one year, uh, we have a very flamboyant and uh, technology savvy chairman, mm -hmm. right, uh, for the, as far as the regulator is mm -hmm. concerned, right. There is a mandate from the ministry that uh, by 2047, uh, 2047 uh, you know, we, we need to have insurance for all, mm -hmm. right. And our belief is that the distribution of insurance is a big, big pain point mm -hmm. uh, as far as insurance carriers are concerned, right. And the only way to solve insurance distribution uh, within a limited budget, mm -hmm. right, where your marginal cost of distribution of insurance comes down, you know, every passing year, that can only happen when you use technology, right. So our belief is that Zopper has to play a very significant role mm -hmm. as far as uh, technology enabled distribution is concerned. Now if you look at the, uh, the summit, right, mm -hmm. uh, no insured tech company so far uh, has done such a summit where uh, they have brought in people from both sides. So the manufacturers, right, as well as the ecosystem partners. The way we define an ecosystem partner is someone uh, who has a captive customer base. And every ecosystem partner today, they are figuring out ways and means to distribute some sort of a BFSI product, right, financial uh, services product. And insurance takes again the pole position there because all you need to do is just distribute insurance. And then anything post sales and endorsements and claims, everything would be managed by the insurance company. So we thought well, let's take a very pioneering uh, position in at least ensuring that we are trying to bring both those two stakeholders uh, at, at a single platform mm -hmm. where we as an intermediary will not only help the ecosystem partners to understand the insurance distribution a lot more, but also from a, a lens of a, a insurance carrier, they would also know that insurance as a value added services can be distributed across various touch points. Now when we talk about insurance, right, it is almost synonymous with digital yes. and the digital model has enabled insurance to reach a broader base. But what are the challenges prevalent in that system and how are insurers stepping up to address these? If I just ask you a question, tomorrow if you have to buy a life insurance product, mm -hmm. not term life, let us say you are buying a savings plan or an endowment plan. Mm -hmm. The average ticket size of those kind of products would be, you know, 1 lakh and above, mm -hmm. right? You are not going to directly go to any e-commerce platform and pay 1 lakh rupees and buy an insurance, right? That ain't going to happen, mm -hmm. right? Uh, 
our belief is that India has always been a digital market, always, always. If you look at any uh, industry, let's say e-commerce, mm. right? Today, you know, we talk about hyper-local e-commerce, mm. where the fulfillment happens from local store, but the customer acquisition happens online. Mm -hmm. And you have tons and tons of those examples. Mm. I believe unlike US, where there is a lot more structure around everything, mm -hmm. um, I have lived there for almost 8-9 years, so mm -hmm. I can vouch for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but India has always been a very omni-channel kind of mm. a market where you have a lot of these infrastructure, but these infrastructures are not enabled by technology, right? So uh, I believe Fidgetal is the only way to go as far as insurance distribution is concerned mm -hmm. because technology can still act as an enabler. Mm -hmm. But when you are buying a very high ticket size, uh, you know, uh, insurance product, you need some sort of a human intervention, mm -hmm. right? As a result, so far, if you have looked, uh, if, you, if you have seen the distribution uh, as far as insurance is concerned, it has always been more branch banking. Mm. Like if you go to tier 3, tier 4 town, you will have branches of HDFC and ICACI, right? Uh, this is because uh, the, everyone who is buying a high ticket size uh, product uh, needs some sort of a trust mm. and trust comes with physical presence, mm. right? So, uh, my sincere belief is that digital can only play a certain role mm. uh, where enablement can happen very seamlessly. But at the end of the day, you know, when you are, when you are, you know, spending such a large amount on insurance and also insurance is not a very, com a very simple product, mm. it's a complex product, you definitely need human intervention. And you need that kind of reassurance that you have Absolutely. a human connect to uh, you know the product that you're buying. Correct, because uh, insurance is a promise, mm. right? It's not that you walk into Chroma, you pay let's say one lakh and buy an iPhone and walk away. Insurance is a promise. Mm. You pay one lakh and maybe the claims uh, you know will come after six seven years, right? So trust is such an important factor, mm. and uh, physical presence basically reinforces that trust. Absolutely. Now let's also talk about bank assurance and looking into the future, what excites you about the prospects? Interesting question Shilpa because if you look at the life insurance uh, gross return premium mm -hmm. in India and we will not talk about LIC because that is a separate behemoth mm -hmm. altogether. <laughs> we talk about the private insurers, 55 to 60 percent of the life insurance uh, sourcing mm -hmm of private insurers happens through bank, mm. right? So bank insurance is such a huge channel, mm. right? But if you look at what Zopper has built, mm. Zopper has built a software as a service platform which has around, uh, if I am not wrong, 13 to 14 modules mm. which caters to the insurance journey end to end primarily from a lens of a bank assurance mm. or, or let us say uh, bank assurance enabled distribution, right? Today, I think the, there are a couple of challenges in bank assurance. One, of course, is a very, very heavily manpower driven distribution, mm -hmm. right? Second is, I sincerely believe is that the right product has never been pitched to the customer, mm -hmm. right? Today, if you, ha you have a lot of these branches mm -hmm. where a customer walks in for a different purpose, but he is being cross-sold, he or she has been, is being cross-sold uh, insurance plan, which not necessarily, uh, you know, probably fits into uh, what he or she is looking, looking for, right? So today we have seen a very significant revolution that is happening mm. and it is starting from uh, the regulator and the ministry mm. uh, where people are talking about digitizing insurance distribution in banks across all the bank assurance solution. So, I feel for Zopper, uh, you know, uh, primarily it is a very, very important vertical where I personally spent a lot of time understanding what all interesting uh, products can we can we build. So, to stitch together everything that is happening around uh, bank assurance. Well, digitization is the focus of digital India and uh, how do you think insure tech plays a role in that and how does it stand out from the rest of the insurance ecosystem? I have been in panels where we always discuss, uh, you know, insure tech versus insurance companies. Mm. I believe it is not a versus game, right? It is always hand in hand, mm. right? See, we are not manufacturers. Mm. I do not have the license to manufacture insurance product, mm. right? So what all we can do? We can distribute an insurance product, mm. right? So I am basically, uh, you know, a very big friend of an insurance company. Mm. 
who can distribute a bite size insurance product to the last mile mm. in a very effective way mm. where the cost of distribution comes down. And I will give an example. So, we talk about increasing insurance penetration of the country. Mm. Now, somebody who has never had an insurance before, it is just humanly impossible for anybody to sell him or her an insurance product let us say more than even 10,000 rupees, mm -hmm. right. He, is, he or she is not going to shell out 10,000 mm -hmm. rupees for an insurance product. So, now how do you increase the insurance penetration? You have to give him or her the flavor of a bite size insurance. Mm -hmm. A bite size insurance average ticket size would be let us say 99 rupees, okay. right. Now, do you think that in 99 rupees an insurance company will be able to distribute an insurance product mm. in remote parts of let us say Gujarat is just not possible mm. economically, yeah. right. So, the only way is to have intermediaries like us who can come in, bring in technology, mm. decrease the marginal cost of distribution of the insurance companies mm. and say that hey you know you need to treat me as you know your partner, mm. you cannot treat me as your competitor because I am going to distribute through technology your products mm -hmm. in a way where all the stakeholders make money. Right. You know also the fact that insurtech companies like yours can provide digital customers a wide array of choices, but how do you also provide them with a financial safety net that they are looking for? So, we talked about propensity model, mm -hmm. right. So, today uh, I am not sure uh, whether the right set of products are sold to the right set of customers. Mm. Right. So, we have concepts like propensity model, we have concepts like universal suitability metrics mm -hmm. that depending upon your life goals mm -hmm. like let us say you get married at the age of say 27, 28, mm -hmm. you will have kids at the age of say 30, 31 so, and you have to start uh, you know conserving your cash or whatever uh, for some moment in the future, right. Can we plan an insurance for that, right. So, I think a lot of our insurance specifically in life is not for protection, it is mm. for investment, mm. right. And today one of the biggest job of any insure tech player is to move that uh, line of thinking mm -hmm. that insurance is of course an investment product, mm -hmm. but insurance is also for your protection, mm. right. As I was mentioning that you know in, in, in earlier one of the questions, the the mortality protection gap in India is 91 percent. Mm. What it means is that let us say the sole bread uh, you know earner of the family passes away, right. Mm. Do the family have necessary uh, you know wherewithal mm. to take care of the future obligations and also pay off the debts, mm. right. Only 9 percent of Indian families have that, Wow. right. So, so which means that insurance has to be protection first, investment mm. later, mm. right. And a lot of the insure tech companies and also you know so to say digital first insurance companies are trying to solve that problem mm. that let us give them a flavor of insurance mm. so that they understand that well uh, when COVID happened, mm. right. Uh, people had health insurances uh, of only 3 to 5 lakhs. Mm. right you go to the hospital once and that entire uh, money is wiped out right so i think there is a lot of learning that that's required and in short take partners should play a very significant role as far as figuring out what is the right product for the right profile of the mm -hmm. customer and through technology distribute that in a very seamless way it's a very sobering thought indeed and really shows you what role an insurance can play in not one person's life now, that is a very sobering thought indeed and especially across the country, uh, socio-economic uncertainties tend to hit rural areas first and this is where small ticket loans and businesses are critical. In this particular context, what is the significance of NBFCs and how do you assess their agility and functioning to manage unforeseen events? As I was mentioning earlier, uh, in the financial services you have lending mm -hmm. and you have insurance. Mm -hmm. Of course, payments uh, is the infrastructure as well. So, lending is a pool product. Everybody in India needs credit, right? That is how the GDP grows also. And insurance is a push product. Now, if you merge these two, 
lending and insurance, mm -hmm. it's a very killer proposition. Mm -hmm. It's killer proposition for both, mm -hmm. both the borrower, right, as well as, well as the lender, mm -hmm. right. Uh, when you look at a lender, lenders are always uh, worried about NPAs, mm -hmm. right. Now, you have very interesting products like income protection plan, right, where if the, if the borrower is not paying you for three months, mm -hmm. the insurance company will step in mm -hmm. and pay you the principal whether in a reducing fashion or whatever, mm -hmm. right. And also at the same time, it offers a lot of protection for the borrowers. Let us say, uh, you know, a gig worker mm -hmm. is out of job for a month, right. He is not going to pay his EMIs, right. But the insurance companies can step in and pay those EMIs on the borrower's behalf to the lender, right. So, I believe that in tier 3, tier 4 towns, the combination of lending which is NBFC and creating these, uh, you know, bite size and sachet insurance products, they go hand in hand, mm -hmm. right. So, we work with some of the largest NBFCs, we work with some of the largest microfinance institutions and what we have seen is that lending offers them a livelihood. So, you pay 30, 40,000 rupees loans in the MFI sector, where you buy let us say cattle, um, you, you set up a small tea stall to basically manage your, uh, your expenses or get a livelihood. But also at the same time, you are protected by the cover of insurance, let us say flood happens and you know as we have seen in Himachal uh, over the last one, one month, uh, let us say the, your entire settlement vanishes, mm -hmm. right. You just do not have the wherewithal to pay. So, insurance companies will come in and sort of pay on your behalf till the time you are back on your feet, mm. right. So, I believe insurance plays a very, very uh, important and, and sort of a, you know, noble kind of a job as far as, uh, you know, uh, the NBFCs and the MFIs are concerned in tier 2, tier 3 towns. Yes, when you put it like that, we can see why that intervention is truly noble. Now, the future is digital and increasingly, there are many avenues through which insurance is currently being disrupted by InsureTech. So, how do InsureTechs plan to address growing data and privacy concerns in the coming decade and what do you think will be the role of regulatory systems in this? Yeah, so regulatory so, the fiduciary responsibility of mm. regulator is mm. always with the customer, mm. the beneficiary, mm -hmm. nobody else. Mm -hmm. Whether you look at all the changes that the RBI is doing in the, fin in, mm. in, in the payment space or lending space, this is just to protect the customer, mm. right. So, our belief as an intermediary, our belief is that data should not be stored with us, right. When the data is in rest and when the data is in motion, mm -hmm. As a technology company, our job is to have different encryption algorithms, right. So, when the data is moving from point A to point B, lesser chances of somebody sort of reading the data, right. Because we are also a B2B2C customer where we have customer uh, related information, not, mm -hmm. not PII, but customer related information, we have virtual private clouds mm -hmm. across all clients, mm -hmm. so that none has access to the other, right. I think the job of a regulator here is to do a couple of things. One is to provide the necessary guardrails mm -hmm. so that the personally personal information of the customer, uh, they are not floating around in the world wide web. And also the job of an intermediary is to ensure that data is uh, kept in such a fashion uh, that, uh, you know, uh, is not being tampered with by, you know, any, any, you know, alien sort of an attack or anything of that sort. To that end, we work with a lot of banks and NBFCs. Mm -hmm. And to get through uh, a CISO approval, which mm. is your, mm. you know, information security approval from a bank, sometimes this takes us like five to six months. Mm. Because the banks will do all kinds of audits to ensure that the data is stored in the right fashion, mm, whether you, you are using different encryption algorithms when the data is moving and the data is rest, whether you have different VPCs, uh, virtual private clouds for different, uh, you know, uh, tenants of data. So, we have to go through a lot to ensure that the data, the customer's, uh, you know, personal information is secured and nobody tampers with that. Okay. We are sufficiently reassured with that. Thank you. Now, do you think there's a growing interest in embedded insurance and extended warranty? And how does Zopper plan to unlock the potential for growth there? As I was mentioning earlier, embedded insurance is nothing but invisible insurance, mm. right? You don't have to pay additionally for that. So, if you, as I was mentioning, if you walk into any retail store, if you are buying any consumer durable product, uh, either you pay a little bit of money 
to safeguard the, uh, the, the equipment that you bought or the product has an inbuilt safety mechanism mm -hmm. in form of insurance, right? Today, I believe the lifestyle that we all live today, especially in the metros and the satellite towns, we have very expensive products in our house, mm -hmm. right? But I'm not sure what would you do uh, if one of those expensive products break down. Oh, right? Terrible, yes. worst case scenario. And today, if you look at it, I'm pretty sure you would have around 11 to 12 brands, mm -hmm. right? You have a different brand of uh, air conditioner, different brand of washing machine, yes. right? And suddenly you realize that whom do I call when something goes wrong, right? So I believe that there is a sufficient need mm -hmm. uh, which is sort of latent now, mm -hmm. but over the last three to four years we have seen significant growth in that particular sector where people are paying to ensure that their appliances or their digital gadgets, uh, you know, are within a protective fold because you have Zopper. Uh, who is always available. It's mm. like it's like Siri or Alexa for you. Siri or Alexa for insurance. Yes, oh, absolutely. Well, that's very well put indeed. Now we know <laughs> when you have all these brands, the umbrella is protecting us. them is yes, offer. Yes, all right. Us. Now in your assessment, what are the different supply and demand side barriers that hold back greater uptake of insurance penetrations across the country? And how does Zopper look at addressing these barriers with a futuristic perspective? Sure. So, a uh, couple of very simple things mm. like uh, insurance is not rocket science, right, mm. for sure. That's what you say. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at an insurance product, it is complex, mm. right? It has terms and conditions, it has inclusions and exclusions, mm. it talks about some assured, it talks about, uh, you know, uh, the nominees, there's a bunch of stuff mm. there. You would be surprised to know that when you buy a life insurance proposal, you have to fill in more than 200 parameters, right, to buy yeah. an insurance. So, it's, yeah. it's a complex product, right. And the reason why people do not buy insurance is because they treat it as a complex product, mm. right. Our job and I think the industry's job mm -hmm. is to break it down mm. in a way where the terms and conditions are lot more easy to understand, mm -hmm. lesser exclusions, more inclusions. Mm -hmm. So, you, you, you do not want to take a product when mm -hmm. claims happen, you see the terms and conditions mm -hmm. and you realize that well, this was not covered, right. <laughs> I think that was a dumb moment, right. Mm. What we are trying to do is these couple of things. Mm -hmm. We are trying to figure out interesting products which are simple to understand, mm -hmm. uh, bite size sachet products, parametric in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, small coverages both on the duration side as well as some assured side. Mm -hmm. So, that somebody who buys a product mm -hmm. knows what I am getting into. That is not the case today, mm -hmm. right. There is so much of opaqueness as far as insurance products are concerned. So, that is that's one thing even the regulator is also trying to do. Mm -hmm. That can we create interesting products mm -hmm. which are easy to understand, easily consumable, uh, easily, you know, adoptable mm -hmm. by the larger mass and that is when your penetration of the country sort of increases. This is number one need for more e easier understanding, transparency and not so much obfuscation. Yes, yes, yes. There is a lot of obfuscation to, yeah, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, in the coming decade, what is Zopper's vision and strategy for consolidating customer trust and perception through digital transformation across interconnected segments such as the digital model, banks, insurtechs, NBFCs, etc. We believe we are the cornerstone of uh, insurance sector uh, and, and I, uh, to the risk of uh, repeating the same thing, I believe that insurance as an industry has not seen a lot of innovation, mm. right? But nobody is to be blamed here because it's not a very old industry post globalization, mm. 20, 22 years old uh, industry. The job of a technology company is to ensure a couple of things, right? Is to basically create systems where different systems from different ecosystem partners can take part in a plug and play sort of a mm -hmm. sort of a fashion, right? That you integrate with banks, you integrate with an account aggregator mm -hmm. system, so that you know that the risk underwriting is done in the right way. Mm -hmm. In the bank, which means I have a fair sense of who you are mm -hmm. because I know how many loans have you taken. I know what the, not exactly, you know, 
how much money do you have but i have a ballpark idea mm -hmm. it is easy for me to offer you a product mm -hmm. which suits your needs mm -hmm. if you have that product then what will happen is you will continue paying for the product till the time your ppt your pay premium paying term sort of uh, expires right so our belief is that technology will pay, play a, a a very very stellar role as far as integrating these different systems are concerned mm -hmm. and when all the systems are talking to each other you have created a a, a holistic system where uh, the product sourcing is uh, transparent distribution is seamless right product for the right customer set the claims and the endorsements and everything is also digitized so that you know when claims happen uh, there is somebody to sort of take care of that i believe that interconnect systems and zopper playing an important role mm -hmm. in between uh, is is something uh, the industry has to uh, sort of opt faster and and i believe just like what happened in payment and lending where you know most of the leaf frogging happened because of technology companies mm -hmm. i believe leaf frogging in the insurance sector would happen because of players like us now for the last question which i think a lot of people have is actually with the name of zopper how did that come about so zopper is a 12 year old organization and we did not start with insurance mm. so we were an hyper local e-commerce player mm. and uh, in in one of your questions i alluded to the fact that india has always been an omni channel yes. sort of a space and we were the pioneers of omni channel commerce back in 2012 wow. right it was uh, way above uh, way before the industry mm. uh, where again the fulfillment used to happen from local store mm. and acquisition used to happen uh, online because we were selling products that point in time so uh, you know zopper meant happy shopping or happy mm. shopper so we wanted like a like a two syllable word uh, starting with uh, z because mm. supposedly you know somebody told me some marketing guy told me mm. that z is the most uh, you know uh, coveted sort of a uh, you know letter in the in 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 the alphabet so we sort of brought these two three things mm. together and we said look okay, at happy shopping or happy shopper is zopper and you need to start with z So we sort of club these two, three things together. Well, I think success of Zopper is way more than just the nomenclature. And while you might be disrupting the insurance uh, sector, I feel like you've actually today, by this conversation, simplified it so much for us. Thank you so much for joining us, Surjendu. And for more such conversations, do check out the NX10 Summit. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much.